live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Welcome back to HPE Discover 2016 in London, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. John Knightley is here, he's the Vice President of Industry Solutions and Alliance Marketing at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. John, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, long trip from San Francisco for you. It but, was, uh, but we're happy to be here. It's beautiful weather here in London. Oh, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, clear skies and uh, big crowd, 10,000 you know, plus here. I could see the uh, the audience is engaged and uh, people are excited about the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise. One of the themes that you guys of course are hitting on is digital transformation. Everybody's hitting on that, but um, what does digital transformation mean to Hewlett Packard Enterprise? So, you know, we really see the world that we're living in is a world where everything increasingly computes. If you think about it, whether it's your car, your home, uh, the cities you drive through, the factories, hospitals, increasingly compute and software is embedded in just about everything we see and everything we touch. And that is um, enabling industries to um, move at a speed that they haven't moved before to understand their customers better than they've ever understood their customers but increasingly also putting strains on you know, the IT infrastructure that supports uh, the enterprise. And so, in a world where everything computes, we see digital transformation is um, happening. It's happening in every industry. It's happening at different speeds. So you think about things like music. It's already happened there, the way we consume and, and purchase music. You think about industries like autom automotive, automotive, where uh, people are talking about today about connected cars and you know, five, 10 years down the road about autonomous vehicles. If you're an automobile manufacturer, there's a lot to grapple with in terms of what does that digital experience look like for your customers? How do you prepare for that? How do you take advantage of Internet of Things and digital to transform your whole manufacturing process? And then connected to that, if you're in the insurance industry, I was talking to a, a chief technologist of one of the major insurers they're grappling with what does insuring people for auto insurance mean in a world where you're moving to autonomous vehicles? Are you insuring the passengers? Are you insuring the car owner? Is the car owner a consumer? Is the car owner a company that's going to have a fleet of vehicles that are sort of available on demand? Liability yes. issues, right? So regardless of what industry you're in, um, there's disruption happening and, and as a result, enterprises need to take advantage of the latest technologies to transform themselves. Well now, when you talk about transformation, digital transformation is, is on the verge of becoming a buzzword, I think. If you do a search on Google Trends, you see the spikes up like this. Uh, can you make this real? I mean, are there examples, customers, whether named or unnamed, that you can cite that really have transformed themselves and tell us how what they what so, they did? Yeah, so it's a great question. We did a survey actually, and and if you uh, if you go to hpe.com/nxt, you can read the results and and uh, actually take a benchmark yourself. It's called our Digital Transformation Index. And in the survey we found that uh, about 80% of, of companies see digital transformation as a reality for them today. And of that, 26% basically see it as a competitive weapon. And then the other 54% see it as uh, doing what they do better. How do they digitize to improve their existing processes? There's about 20% that are still on the sidelines with their arms crossed waiting to see what happens. And by industry, you're going to see varying results. So, you know, forward-thinking industries like financial services, telecom, retail, they're above 85%. Uh, the ones that are leaning back are ones like public sector at 63% or, or transportation. So what does it really mean in those industries and, and what are they doing? Really we see it bucketing into three areas. So one is, how do I take digital technologies and my understanding of my customers to improve customer experience. So a great example of that, one of our customers is Levi Stadium, which hosted the last year's Super Bowl in the US. 80,000 fans, uh, we helped help Levi Stadium uh, Wi-Fi enable that whole experience together with a mobile application that'll allow you to you know, buy your beer and hot dog from your seat and get it delivered to you in your seat, uh, taking advantage of location-based services, um, as well as you know, be able to navigate and find the right merchants, uh, let's say for your you know, souvenirs. 
um, through location-based services on your mobile device. So that's an example of customer experience. Second bucket around digital transformation is really around how you digitize existing products and services and wrapper those physical products and services with a digital experience. Or, you know, if you're in an industry like financial services, it's really about just enhancing the digital services that you already provide. So, you know, take that, take an example. One of the uh, customers we work with um, is a theme park, park operator and um, basically uh, what they were able to do is transform the whole experience of families visiting the theme park with, with a, a, a device that the families could wear that would basically, uh, um, uh, they could wave as they, as they go into a restaurant, they would know who, who the family is, what their preferences are, and that they already have a reservation on tap, things like that. The third area is really around taking digital into improving your core business operations, whether it be manufacturing or supply chain or logistics. So, um, you know, a great example there uh, is really what's happening around industrial internet of things. So how we're uh, partnering with uh, companies like GE Digital and National Instruments to um, be able to bring intelligent computing to the edge of the enterprise and uh, do things like predictive maintenance of equipment failure on, you know, on the shop floor or an oil field or things like that where a, you know, downtime can cost millions and millions of dollars. I saw um, a Gartner survey, I want to say yesterday on Twitter, mm -hmm. and um, it looked like it was a you know, survey of IT professionals, CIOs and, and I, the IT function, and the, the question posed was how much are you spending of your budget on digital transformation initiatives you know, this year and two years out? And it was relatively low, mm -hmm. because you, know, you go to conferences like this, hearing you know, conversations like we're having here, it seems like everybody is looking at digital transformation, and, and the, the figures were like maybe 20% of the budget, maybe growing to 28%. Mm -hmm. I was shocked at how low that was, so I, I, I was struck and said, well, Every organization I talked to was spending money on this. So, so is it just that the IT function is not you know, in charge of that initiative? Or am I missing something? Is it just all hype? It's a great question. I mean, the way we see it is that most of our traditional enterprise customers are dealing with you know, decades of legacy technology that they've built up over the years, or technical debt, as we sometimes like to call it in the industry. And so if you think about it, most enterprises are stuck in this traditional pattern of 80% of the IT budget going to kind of maintain that existing technology and try to keep it up to date and only 20% going to innovation. So probably, you know, hidden in those, that survey that you saw from Gartner is, is some of that, that traditional challenge that money's locked into those existing systems. And so one of the things that we're, um, really focusing on with a new Hewlett Packard Enterprise is making hybrid IT simple, helping our, you know, the CIO and the central IT organizations dramatically modernize and streamline their traditional IT, private clouds, and even their use of public clouds, and, and be able to expand those three kind of compute platforms to provide a much more agile infrastructure to deliver all these new apps and services that are going to power um, digital transformation. So really hope, hopefully you know, start to take the numbers down that, uh, of the budget that has to be you know, put aside for keeping the lights on and free up more for innovation dollars uh, to transform. Uh, this uh, digital transformation uh, theme has been picked up. I mean, Boston Consulting Group has mm -hmm. got, got it. McKinsey, Accenture, all of these, these big um, uh, consulting firms are, are, are saying that they are, they're going to accomplish this. Why would a company go to HPE for that? Goal. That's a great question. So, you know, first of all, let me make a point, and, and, and with the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise, we're, we're much uh, more focused, we're leaner than, than we've ever been before, and we are really uh, an ecosystem play. And so what we see, our part in the ecosystem is really being really great at three things that are going to be sort of, if you will, powering uh, this digital transformation. One is simplifying uh, hybrid IT. So really helping to deliver that platform across your traditional IT, your private cloud, your, your public cloud environment to power your apps and data workloads. The second area is really around um, powering the intelligent edge. And what we mean by that is really you know, outside the data center, outside your cloud environment, 
where you're interacting with customers, where you're manu making things, right? So your, your shop floor, your retail environment, your, you know, your, um, uh, uh, where you're interacting with customers, bringing together the things that there are there, the uh, internet of things, the, the people on their mobile devices, and the applications that are there to power new experiences. And then the last is really the expertise to uh, bring this together to make it all happen, and that's really through our traditional uh, services organization that has been doing this in different industries around the world. Where we see kind of an ecosystem play happening is partnering with those, some of the system integrator and advisory firms that you mentioned that are really good at business process. So they might know, you know, within financial services or within telecommunications or within retail, here are the core processes, they can bring the advisory capabilities to, to advise those end cl clients on process uh, optimization and process change and, and business model change. We will help actually deliver the platform to speed that up and make it more agile for, for the end uh, customer. To me the partnering piece is so critical now mm -hmm. for HPE, especially given the two major spin merges that you've mm -hmm. done with the EDS component you know, and now going to CSC and the software business going to MicroFocus, those are two capabilities that when you think about digital transformation, you think about large systems integration complexities that you could handle with mm -hmm. that capability, and things in software, mm -hmm. making SDKs available, reaching out to the developer community. Those two major components are now becoming largely partners, mm -hmm. and not your only partners. Right. So, but you, at the same time, you don't have that vertical integration capability, so what specifically has, I know it's early days, but what has HPE done or will it do to um, facilitate those types of partnerships? Sure, so I'm very bullish actually on, on the new platform that, that we've got. We still, are, we still have a software uh, development team, 3,000 developers strong, uh, and what we're doing there is really uh, delivering on our vision of hybrid IT with our uh, HPE OneView platform, our Helion cloud platform, and, and basically that's a, an API-driven set of uh, platforms that allow you to plug and play in the latest, greatest stack elements, whether it be you know, Chef and, and Puppet for DevOps, things like that, whether it be you know, Docker for containers or Mesosphere and, and those sort of new stack players. We've got a very open stack now for being able to integrate best of breed players into the environment, uh, as well as then services expertise to make that all work together. So, you know, that, that's number one, the API, open APIs to be able to take the software layers from our partners and then integrate it seamlessly into our stack to be able to power the right mix of infrastructure to power that application or, or data workload. Uh, then the other one is really partnering with services uh, firms who can do the advisory work. And so, of course, ESCSC will, will remain a very important partner for us, but, but we're also uh, playing you know, very nicely with uh, a lot of the, the big name you know, integrators and advisory firms out there as they you know, have deep industry expertise that they can bring to bear on, on some of our clients' deepest needs. Our previous guest was, was Alistair Winner of VP of Technology Services mm -hmm. for Computer at HPE. Uh, where does, who leads the, the, uh, the project? Mm -hmm. Do you typically come in after Alistair has, uh, has been engaged or do you lead that sale? So Al Alistair, so technical services is our main services arm. So we would uh, work, you know, in, in, in a case where we're working with partners, it really depends. So there may be cases where we're leading um, and the client, uh, because of our expertise, the client is entrusting the project entirely to technical services. There are other cases where uh, maybe an advisory or SI is already in the, working with a customer, maybe on business process design, and then brings us in uh, to help you know, finish that out and, and build, let's say, a private cloud environment to deliver on the applications that have to be delivered for that product. So, so who drives digital transformation these days? Do you see, it, is it a C-suite thing? Is it line of business? We is it IT? see it as a C-suite initiative, so you know, really starting with a CEO uh, who's mandating you know, we have to um, change, and you know, Jamie Dimon, CEO of uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, wrote a letter a year or two ago to shareholders about you know, Wall Street is or uh, sorry, Silicon Valley is coming. 
uh, really around the rise of fintechs and how fintech startups are potentially going to eat banks' lunch if they don't, uh, if banks don't sort of transform digitally. And so we see that happening in just about every industry. And so it's really a CEO-driven initiative with chief digital officer, chief marketing officer, CIO, all at the table to help make these projects come to life. And I love the, the conversation about the new stack. I mean, you need a new stack in order right. to service these new customers. I think Bobby Patrick is coming on later. He tweeted yesterday this, this, this compendium of logos mm -hmm. of the new stack and I was trying to pick them, okay, there's Docker, Miso, uh, and, and, and so we're going to unpack that with him, but uh, Excellent. I really appreciate, John, you coming on theCUBE and uh, sharing your perspective, so congratulations. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to, to be here with you. Thank you. All right, you. good deal. Okay, keep it right there, everybody. Paul and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from HPE Discover 2016, and we'll be right back. <laughs>